not crazy. <laughs> I'm not crazy. I am crazy. Hey everybody, we're back. If you're new, thanks for joining us. I'm Shannon, click that subscribe button, please. If you're not new, thanks for coming back. You'll know where we're at today. If you've been with me for a while, then you know. Um, I'm using my gimbal thing, so it's face tracking. I'm trying to show y'all up there. I can't show you, but we are at Dr. Alavi's office, and we are about to go in, do our pre-op appointment. I'm super excited, y'all. I feel like I've made this walk a number of times, and I've made this walk a number of times with y'all but we are headed in there. I know I'm gonna pay him today. I do have a few questions that I wanna ask him, but all in all, I'm just really excited to get this ball rolling and get closer to where I wanna be, which is super exciting. But let's go check it out and I'll see you in a minute. Okay, y'all, so they brought me back to the room. I have been in this room a number of times. I did fill out some paperwork. It was just basically like my medical history again. Everything I've already filled out and nothing has changed, but I guess I just had to redo it. So, you know, my birthday, if I've had surgeries, if I'm allergic to anything, um, do I smoke, do I drink, do I, what? you know, how's my health, all of that. So I filled all of that out and now I am waiting. I guess they're gonna take me to a room and we're gonna do some sizer things. I'm not sure because when I did my BBL there was there was none of that so we're gonna I'm waiting for them we're gonna go back and do some sizer things I'll let y'all know how that goes because this process is all new to me although I've had a good bit of work done this process is new and this was what I was hoping was gonna happen so that I could make sure that I got the size that I actually wanted because I know a lot of people are scared that they're gonna go too big but I'm I don't know if I'm scared I'm gonna go too big or if I'm scared I'm gonna go too small. So when I was pregnant, my largest point while I was pregnant was I got up to a D cup, which for me, I thought a D cup would be massive and like look great and honestly, it was not impressive at all, which is why I plan on going for a double D and I've looked at a lot of boobies online and um, you know, my mom has double D. I have a lot of friends that have double Ds. So I'm familiar with the size, although it's different after. Obviously my mom's had a few kids and she's older so they're <laughs> sorry mom they're like saggy they're down there right so obviously mine will look different but I'm also scared because the idea of a double D sounds really big and kind of like maybe that's too much so I'm glad anyway anyway in general I'm glad that we're gonna go try them out I don't know how much I'm gonna get to show y'all of that but we'll definitely talk about it and go over everything else too I don't know let's let's one second at a time not day by day but one second at a time and I'll see y'all in a minute Okay, so she just left. She did give me this booklet going over everything that we discussed. Also talked about the medications that I will be taking, going over all of the paperwork that I signed, make sure that I understand all of it. She'll be calling my prescriptions in. So I'm taking four different medicines. I think it was four. There'll be a muscle relaxer, uh, Ambien to help me sleep, Percocet and um, Promethazine also. And then she did give me the Arnica pills, which um, I took them last time. You start taking those before the surgery. Oh, I think there's an antibiotic too. I don't remember, but these are the little Arnica pills um, that help with the swelling and everything and bruising. And I also talked to her about the gel because I really like the gel. Y'all, I'm struggling with this mask on. I really like the gel and I like the ointment too, but now I don't have to go buy any because she got me some. So this helps a lot with the swelling and I'll be able to rub it on myself. The gel dries a lot faster than the ointment, which is why I like the gel more. But we're about to go in and check the sizing and everything, so I'm pretty excited, y'all, because I wanna see what it's gonna look like, and I feel like, I don't know, we're just, we're getting there, y'all, and I'm just, I'm happy that I've been able to share all of this with y'all, honestly, because I feel like we've been through a major journey in the past year, but anyway, let's go, let's go to the other room. Okay, y'all, so I have this bra on. I have it filled with two different sizes. Um, this one is, this one's the bigger one? This one's the bigger one. This one's the bigger one. Size 16 and, and that one's the 15. Okay, so I think we're gonna, oh, this is the bigger one. So we're gonna go for this one. And I'm about to go talk to the doctor and see what our next move is. Okay, y'all, we're done. I am headed back to the car. When we get home, I will go over all of the paperwork and the instructions and a little bit more detail about what happened today. I'll see y'all in a little bit. Okay, y'all, it has actually been a couple of days. We had roofers fixing the roof, so it was just way too loud for me to film during the week. But I wanna go over more in depth what they went over with me and talk about the paperwork that they gave me and all of the instructions. So just like with my last surgery, 
Jewelry, they did give me a little folder with a bunch of information and things that I needed to know about and make sure that I do. I also went and picked up my medications and I will go over those with you also. So the first paper that I have, it says pretty much please don't drink or eat anything for eight hours before the procedure. No gum. If you have any detachable items, earrings, contacts, um, teeth remove them. If you wear contacts, you should just wear your glasses in there. No makeup, no lotion on the day of surgery. No black, blue, or purple nail polish. I'm not exactly sure why, but you can have clear, pink, or red. You should wear comfortable clothing that is loose, pants with an elastic band so they're easy to get on and off. And then also you should wear a shirt that either buttons or zips. So last time I just wore one of my husband's hoodies and that is probably what I will wear again this time. They did say to wear darker clothes, obviously because you can get some blood on those clothes so you don't wanna ruin them and wear like a white shirt or white pants or a cream or something light like that. It says that after your procedure, you should have someone come and pick you up. Obviously you're not supposed to drive or make any major decisions 24 hours after your surgery. I do want to say that I remember waking up from my last surgery and I couldn't see anything. It just seemed like all black, but I remember saying like, oh, where's my phone? I need to call my mom and tell my mom that I'm okay. And I heard Carol in the background kept telling the nurse, like, do not give her her phone. Do not give her her phone because then it's pretty much like drunk dialing. And I could probably say some things that maybe I shouldn't say or don't want to say. So in addition to the don't make major life-changing decisions within those 24 hours, they are also not going to, at least where I go, they're not gonna let you have your phone while you're still laying on the bed and you're just waking up because it is kind of like drunk dialing because I pretty sure I said some things, not on the phone to my mom, but in general to the nurses, that I wouldn't normally say. Okay, and it does say that you should have somebody there with you at least that first night to help take care of you and make sure that everything goes smoothly. It also says that you need to take your medication with food and something to drink. So eat and drink something before you actually take the medication. Try to rest when you get home. The semi-sitting position is preferable and remember to use cold packs, baggies of frozen peas or ice in the areas instructed so I plan on just getting a bag of peas and putting them into two Ziploc baggies so that I can have them sitting on there because I feel like cold packs aren't really bendable and a bag of peas will just fit nicely there. It also says to take deep breaths every one to two hours after you Ooh. arrive home and cough if possible. Not really sure why, but it does say that. And if you smoke, you should reduce your smoking because it will help your recovery. It says don't stand unassisted without somebody nearby to offer you assistance um, for the first 12 to 24 hours, which I do remember that with my last surgery also. I didn't really have any problems standing. I will say with my last surgery, um, my first day was pretty rough and foggy. If I'm being honest, it's pretty foggy. I do remember getting nauseous one time and I, even all of these kids, I did not throw up during any of my pregnancies, but I did throw up once after my surgery. So I will say to the dizziness and the nausea will be there. I, I already know that. Then some instructions for before the surgery. Do not take any aspirin. So you can take Tylenol. I have Tylenol PM. So I did go and get some Tylenol because I don't want to have to take Tylenol PM if I get a headache or something like that. But um, it says do not take any aspirin or any products containing aspirin for 14 days prior to the surgery and seven days following because those are blood thinners. The following medications do contain aspirin and should be avoided. So they have Alka-Seltzer, Bufferin, Cope, um, a bunch of stuff that I'm not going to take. Pepto-Bismol, Midol, Excedrin. So a bunch of, I don't take any of those things anyway. Do not take any non-steroid anti-inflammatory medicines, Advil, Ibuprofen, or Midol, 10 days prior to the surgery and seven days after. Tylenol is acceptable. Don't take any vitamin E or homopathic medicines such as St. John's warts, which I've never taken that, 14 days prior. Um, Pick up your antibiotics and pain medications a few days prior to your surgery. I already picked those up. And then begin taking the Arnica Montana three days prior to the surgery. It'll be three pills three times a day. They actually give that to you. So I'm pretty sure I showed y'all that 
already. This is what they gave me last time. This is what they gave me this time. And they just dissolve. You stick them under your tongue and you do that three times a day. They also gave me the gel. I like the gel because the gel dries faster. The ointment is obviously, it's an ointment. So it doesn't dry. It leaves, um, it leaves. There's, it's on there. You know what I'm saying? So I just, I don't like that. I prefer the ointment, but the gel is nice. If you're going to get, if you're getting a BBL or a liposuction, the gel is nice for a little rub down massage. My husband would do that for me and it felt so good on the morning of, okay. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, on the morning of the surgery, do not take any of your medications. Um, smokers should avoid smoking or at least cut down to two to three cigarettes per day for three days prior to the surgery. And then after your surgery, when you're fully alert, you can begin your diet with water or ginger ale. I drink water, so I will drink water. Somebody did recommend that I get some straws. So I do have some reusable straws and I have some regular straws that I just picked up, but I'll be using those because I guess lifting your arms, um, I don't know if it's painful or if it's just a hassle, but I did get some straws and then light meals may be eaten. With my last surgery, I did get nauseous a number of times, so I pretty much just stuck to eating bread and drinking water for the first two days probably. Probably I really didn't eat that much. Um, I did get orange juice because I feel like that just gave me a little bit of energy. I had my husband get me some orange juice. So eat a light soft diet as tolerated. No alcohol or salty foods for seven days. That will, the alcohol and, and the salty foods, I think they make you swell more. So that's why they say try not to have any of that. Then it says begin taking the pain medication every four to six hours. Start with a half a pill. Pain medication needs to be taken after you eat. So they did give me pain medication. They gave me, um, they gave me like a generic Percocet and then they also gave me some type of muscle relaxer So the two combined are supposed to help because I'm slightly concerned the the Percocet is a really low milligram and because I'm also getting lipo I'm a little bit concerned that this pain medication will not be strong enough for me But from what she said with the muscle relaxers and that because the implant goes under the muscles So it's gonna be sore that's supposed to help but I don't know because I do um, Take muscle relaxers on occasion because I pulled muscle in my back so I don't know if I'm gonna have to call after the surgery and ask for something stronger and then the nausea medicine they gave me I didn't even open it yet it's promethazine I didn't realize that promethazine was a thing on its own I just thought promethazine and codeine were a thing but I didn't realize promethazine was a thing on its own so they gave me promethazine for the nausea but it's a suppository I'm actually gonna call and see if I can get the pills that I had last time for nausea because I feel like just taking a pill would be a lot easier then um, a suppository. And then it also says following the surgery, you'll wear a special bra. They provide that bra and you must wear it for two weeks, 24 hours a day, no underwire push-up or sports bras for six weeks. Because I'm also getting liposuction on my sides, I did ask about the type of garment I would be wearing. It's not a full garment, thank God, because going to the bathroom in a full garment is a struggle. It's a struggle. This is just like a waist trainer and then I guess I'll have a bra also, but that's not that's not in this paper. And then it also does say back pain can occur within 48 hours. It's not unusual. It could last for a day or two. I normally have back pain anyway, so that's not if my back starts hurting, that's not going to be a big surprise to me. Also, with the liposuction that I'm getting, it's going towards the back also. So I probably will experience some back pain. Also, having to sleep sitting up, I just expect that that's not going to be comfortable for my back. It also says um, to avoid constipation, you may take colis. 100 milligrams. It's an over-the-counter laxative. I will say, I honestly wish that they would have said this when I had my BBL because I, TMI, I was extremely constipated. So um, I need to pick that up Although I'm not a laxative person, I will pick that up because the last time was a struggle. Follow-up care. You'll be seen and examined the following day. I do have an appointment already set up for the very next day. And um, I don't know, my mom or my husband will drive me to that. And then we also have more hints. So you may take a shower two days after. Once you take a shower, just allow the water to run over your body and your incisions, but do not use any soap on those incisions. Applying a cold compress can be helpful if you have frozen peas or corn in a small Ziploc baggie. That's what I plan on doing anyway. Try to sleep